I work in the area of uh, superconductivity. I'm a f physicist and uh, superconductivity involves uh, two electrons pairing together, one with spin up, one with spin down, and this object, a Cooper pair, can move through a crystal without any energy loss. So it transports charge and electric current, but it loses no energy, so zero resistance. It's a perfect conductor. And you can use these to make, uh, of course, MRI scanners, NMR instruments. The Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland has got 5,000 superconducting magnets uh, in it. And really, it's the technology of the 21st uh, century. It's going to impact on everything, transport, health, communications, energy, research. Well, it's a bit like my science. I've been a scientist as long as I can remember, and I think I've been a Christian as long as I can remember. Um, <clears throat> very much influenced by uh, my parents and the faith that they had, which was a very real um, kind of faith that made them uh, reach out to neighbours, uh, embrace uh, people in the community and their need. And I think that was really vital for me to understand that Christianity was a living expression of faith uh, through action and it's not just uh, all belief and it's not just mental. Um, so that was, that was crucial really and I want to honour my parents in that they were faithful people. Um, another key thing was that I grew up in Mount Albert Baptist Church and amongst its membership were people like uh, Professor E.M. Blakelock, Professor of Classics, Auckland University. And uh, I guess he introduced me to the notion that uh, Christianity is not blind faith, but it's faith which is predicated on reason and argument and evidence. And of course, that was the hallmark of, of his uh, preaching and teaching and uh, public engagement uh, was the role of evidence uh, as it plays out uh, in a Christian's faith. So that was pretty crucial, really. And I think that the idea of God becoming human is, that's got to be the most profound thing within the universe. No science comes anywhere near that. No philosophical idea comes anywhere near that, that the creator of the universe should become a single living cell within his mother's body. That's profound, that's, that's wonderful. <clears throat> and everything springs from that, uh, really. But at the human level, Einstein is, has famously said that in the words of Jesus, one has a teaching which is capable of healing all the social ills of humankind. So even if you take Jesus just simply at the level of a wise teacher. His teaching is profound, isn't it? If we all, if every human being on planet Earth took aboard his teaching, then our social ills would start to disappear pretty rapidly. Um, but he was more than that, wasn't he? I mean, the world has had its wise teachers uh, over the centuries, over the millennia. Um, wise and wonderful people who have had profound uh, contributions to, to uh, our understanding of life, but God become a human being and walking amongst us and embracing uh, the unembraceable, loving the unlovely. Uh, that's got to be the most profound thing we could ever encounter. Well, science, you know, some people have the idea that science is slowly unpacking the universe and slowly explaining everything and slowly squeezing God out as though God were just the bit that filled in, the gap, in our gaps of understanding. Uh, but actually, the reverse has been happening over the last um, 50 years, 100 years. Uh, science has been unraveling the layers upon layers of mystery that exist within the universe. It's a profoundly improbable universe, and I find it impossible to address the existence of the universe without also addressing the originator of the universe. 
because it's so profoundly improbable. For the first time in the history of humankind, we can start to put probabilities on things, and we see that uh, it's just profoundly improbable. Uh, on a purely random basis, you and I shouldn't exist, you know, but we do. And um, I'm very much influenced by Psalm 139, where David says, uh, <clears throat> I praise you, Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And biology is the supreme example, isn't it, of how fearfully and wonderfully made the universe is. Often people in the general public have never thought about these things, have never thought that faith need not be blind faith. But it's having um, a reason to believe, having good reason uh, to believe.